Ladies and gentlemen, it's been, uh, I guess, about six years since Ogenus Banner Planets was uh, with us the last time. I think since then he went back to England, got a PhD in nutrition. Yes. And uh, he had come down with uh, very serious cancerous conditions, happened to uh, find nutrition as a way to overcome it. He wrote a book, um, the first one I think was uh, We Want to Live, followed up with uh, The Recipe for Living Without Disease, and now he's come back with another book, We Want to Live, The Primal Diet. So it's a pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Ogenus Vanderplanis. Thank you Thank for you being here. Thank you. Now, how many of you are biochemists? How many of you understood all of the language that went on here during this entire weekend about what nutrients you have to have for your particular condition or whatever? I want you to throw all of that out. Get rid of all of it. You're just going to be confused. I'm a biochemist and a very adept one, and I can't even keep up with it. And just know that any time you're taking any kind of a medica any kind of medication, supplement, even if they're called natural, how they are made is the producer wanting to make a very good product goes to a laboratory and said, I want a natural vitamin, all completely natural. I don't want you to use anything unnatural in it. And the laboratory says, oh, I can do that. And you know how they do that. They go to General Foods, General Mills, Purina, and they buy all of their leftover food waste. And that's what they take the elements from. It's been subjected to 60,000 chemicals, highly processing and full of toxins. Then that company will use a natural solvent, and that natural solvent is kerosene. And they use kerosene derivatives to extract the nutrients that will be put into your pill or liquid or whatever it is. How many of you would soak your food in kerosene for 30 minutes, rinse it off for 45 seconds and eat it? That's what you're doing when you're having any supplement. I had a, I gave this particular information to a, uh, a group and a big famous natural supplemental company filed a lawsuit against me. I showed them all of my research with all laboratories and told them about the kerosene and where they got the stuff. And this company said, no, we provide our own food. We grow our foods. I said, but if you grew your foods and just use your food, you'd still have to use kerosene as the extractor or a kerosene derivative. Plus, you would be charging $1,000 a pill. They have to go get waste product to make it uh, viable, profitably viable. So that company backed off. No one has been able to sue me because what I have to tell you is correct. If you want good, healthy nutrients, the only place you're going to get them is raw food. Now, you have to consider what we are. We are bacteria. You are a half a percent human. For every one human gene, you have 150 bacterial genes. So you have to take everything the pharmaceutical and the medical industry say, no matter who it is, whether it's an alternative or what, and you have to question what they say based on the theory of the bacteria, theory causing disease. Bacteria does not cause disease. E. coli 157H7 may, because that's a man-made one. The only place I've been able to collect 157H7 is from laboratories that were given it by the FDA or the CDC. And when I put a fractionating enzyme on that particular bacteria, it does not fractionate as normal bacteria fractionate in the five parts, it splices. That means it's man-made. Only man-made bacterias are spliceable. So all, the, all of the, the nonsense about E. coli being a problem is all because Monsanto and Dow want your dollar for fertilizers. 
They tried to outlaw last year manure as fertilizer because of the E. coli 157H7 threat. So what would be left? If we outlawed natural fertilizers, what would be left? Dow and Monsanto. So you have to take a hard look at what's going on out there. They're trying to get rid of our farmers. They're trying to get rid of our natural farms. And that's the only way you can get pure, whole, natural vitamins. Once you heat food above 105 degrees, you've destroyed the bacterial activity. And remember that all functions of any animal are bacterial. If you took an antibiotic for five days, you've destroyed 1% of the whole body's functionality. Think about that. Then you wonder why people who take um, antibiotics for extended periods get weaker and weaker and weaker and more susceptible. My mother, for example, she uh, got uh, lung, uh, she got breast cancer about nine years ago. And she said, I, she called me and said, I know you're entirely against this, but I'm going to do it. She's a nurse, caught up in the whole thing. And I said, well, what are you going to do? She said, well, first I'm going to have a lumpectomy, and then I'm going to have a pinpoint radiation. I said, okay, mom, let's take a look at those. Lumpectomy. They're going to remove, what, 11 of your lymph glands? What do lymph glands do in the body? Lymph glands are your immune system. There's really no such thing as an immune system. The pharmaceutical's idea of immune system is just to confuse you. You have a cleansing system in your body. The lymphatic system is responsible for cleaning any waste and toxin out of your body. It has to break down cells and dissolve them into compounds that it can put under the skin so you can perspire them out of the body. 90% of toxins are supposed to leave through the skin. 10% through the other tracts, the digestive, bowels, urinary tract. But 90% are supposed to leave through the skin. If you have rashes, if you have pimples, and you have cancer, expect it and be happy you have it because it's going out the skin. Imagine the damage you would do to the intestines and to your digestion if it were going out the intestinal tract. So you have to think about all those things. When you reach 112 degrees, you have incapacitated all enzymes that help digestion. When you reach 122 degrees, you've destroyed most of your major vitamins, including vitamin A. By the time you've hit 32, 132 degrees, you have destroyed all of those natural vitamins, enzymes, and uh, subcategory uh, nutrients. When you get up to 141 degrees, which was the old pasteurization temperature, and for only 15 seconds, you cauterized 50% of your calcium. That means you were unable to utilize 50% of your calcium. Now, the higher the temperature goes, you reach all kinds of points of destruction. Protein destruction, fat destruction that causes lipid peroxides, heterocyclic amines, um, and uh, all so sorts of compounds. There are 32 known toxins produced from cooking. All of those cause buildup of toxins in the body. When you reach a point of cancer like I had, you're in really bad shape. And I was 20 years old. My death sentence was 21. I first got an ulcer. The treatment for that gave me tumor on the ulcer. The treatment for that was a vigotomy pyloroplasty. They removed the tumor, sewed up, stretched my duodenum into three times the normal size, completely scarring it and severing all the nerves to my vagus, uh, all the vagus nerves to my stomach so I would no longer secrete hydrochloric acid. If I had no hydrochloric acid, I couldn't have an ulcer, right? But how about protein digestion? They put me in the category of octogenarians who cannot produce hydrochloric acid and digest their proteins. So basically, how was I to live? 
They also told me, because I didn't produce hydrochloric acid, that I would be um, in danger of death if I ate anything raw. I had to steam apples, bananas, no matter what it was, everything had to be cooked. Now you take a look at that. Well, if that destroys all the nutrients, then how am I going to benefit? I did what they said. I ended up a worm on the floor. I was so painful on my back because the radiation was so intense. They cauterized five inches of my back. It was solid. If I made even a bit of movement, I was excruciating pain. I lived on a floor, crawling on a floor like a worm. So much pain, I couldn't urinate into a vessel, couldn't defecate into a vessel. I vomited and urinated and defecated all over myself and just traveled around the wooden floor of the living room, dining room combined, just doing that. And then a couple of volunteers from a hospice uh, came to help me several days a week, and they would clean, up, clean me up in the whole house. And one of them was an 18-year-old African-American boy from Watts. He said, if you drink carrot juice and raw milk, you'll probably reverse your uh, cancers. I lived on powdered donuts and RC cola, you know. What's this about carrot juice and raw milk? And at the point after the, uh, the radiation therapy, within a few months, uh, well, a few weeks, six, seven weeks, all the bone deteriorated around my gum. Because why? I had damaged the blood and bones so that I developed multiple myeloma, cancer of the blood and bone, and then developed lymphoma from the, the chemotherapy. So their therapies give you cancer. They make about, nowadays, they make about 280000 per cancer patient. That's a lot of money. Back then, they got 160000 for me. And uh, they still are doing very well. They do not want a cure for cancer. And the cure for cancer is Dr. Samuel Epstein, who was a doctor for several uh, presidents, said the only cure for cancer is diet. All of the medical professions, uh, treatments for cancer are only harmful and will not give you, give you well and will promote more cancer. Now let's take a look at what cancer is from my perspective. When I did autopsies and did my research, what I found was cells, mainly 98% of a tumor, was always dead cells. Dead cells the body couldn't clean, dissolve, and eliminate from the body. Why? Because the lymph system didn't move. Now, how did we go from 60 years ago, one cancer in a thousand to one cancer in Two if, you're a, uh, two if you're a male and one in three if you're a female, according to Samuel Epstein. How did we go from that? We went from that because we went to trans fatty acids. Trans fatty acids are vegetable oils or mineral oils or petroleum oils that are hydrogenated. And when you hydrogenate an oil, you turn it into plastic. That's how plastic is made. So you're eating plastic fats. Now, what do these plastic fats do? They dehydrate and solidify in the body, mostly in the lymphatic system, because the lymphatic system bases 60 to 80% of its work on fats. So you have this waxy, hard fat in your lymphatic system. You're not going to clean the body. You're not going to take those dead cells and dissolve them. So the body is going to start building them in little fibroids all over the system. If you're a lucky female, you've got all of that tissue down there to build it. That's why women live longer. They have a depository down there and can get rid of a lot of the tumors without with dead cells without forming into tumors that will block functionality elsewhere, such as the heart, lungs, or liver. So dissolving the dead cells is the main focus of cancer. How do you dissolve dead cells? I found it's very easy. Now, I'm I'm 44-year cancer survivor. As of December, I was supposed to die in December of 68. 
and here I am today, almost 65, speaking to you today. And I have a 95, on my diet I don't, I don't cure anybody, food does. And when people go on my diet, they have a 95% success rate. Not only cancer, but everything else. And uh, the esteemed Dr. Elnora Van Winkle, who is the chief um, neuroscientist uh, at Columbia University in New York City, challenged me. So I gave her, this was in uh, 2002. She challenged me um, about that record. And then I gave her two of the 242 cancer patients that I'd worked with up to that time and uh, that had been on the diet for at least six years. And she called every one of them, found that 96% of them were still alive and well and still doing the diet about 90%. And the ones that passed away, guess how much of the diet they did? 40 to 50%. And the ones who were the, the, the ones who died, they were very thin people. I tell everybody in my books, get fat. Fats, fats are what dissolve toxins in the body. Your body gets the best energy from fats. It will dissolve toxins for fats, from fats, and it will, it will protect and strengthen the body. So fats are the most important. Now you can say, oh, uh, Dennis, you don't look so fat, right? Well, that's because I've been eating nothing but raw since February of 72. And when you uh, research and look at uh, fats under an electronic microscope, especially after they're broken down in the stomach and uh, in the area where the bile dumps, you find that these molecules are very, very tiny. When you take a cooked food and you analyze that, you'll find that these swell five to 50 times their normal size. So you take fat back, you know, like, uh, you know, the uh, uh, pork rind, and it's very, very thin, and then you cook it, and what happens? It's this big, swollen. So I'm 18, no, right now I'm 19% body fat, and I look like I'm 7 to 10% body fat. That's because all the fat in my body has been made with very tiny raw molecules. So I eat at least two pounds of raw unsalted butter weekly and a quart of raw cream, and I mean heavy, heavy, thick cream, which would be like two quarts of thin cream. I eat a tremendous amount of fats. I tell all of my cancer patients that they should get at least, women should get at least 23 pounds overweight, and men should get at least 35 pounds overweight. Those fats are responsible for absorbing the toxins that are killing your cells. If you have already collected a lot of cells, dead cells in the body, and you have cancer, you have to stop your body from collecting more. You have to make sure that it dissolves those dead cells so that the body can eliminate it, either perspire it or dump it out the intestines. Now, you're not going to perspire it out the skin as the main uh, organ to discharge it unless your lymphatic system is working properly. So let's get to how we do that. Okay, we'll have all the fats in the body. We have the protection. Any more toxins break down. We inhale any, any that comes in our environment, any that may be in the food, they may lie. We have organic food, but they lie. FDA allows them to use 15% toxic substances even in organic food. So to protect ourselves from this, we have all these fats. So now we have the fats to, to protect us and to also dissolve the toxicity. How do we get that lymphatic system moving? Hot baths. Saunas don't do it because they're too hot. It'll, even the infrared ones, they go up to 137 degrees. What temperatures start destroying the enzymes in skin? 110, 112 degrees. So we need to keep, have like a, keep a constant temperature of about 108 degrees. For 90 minutes is what I found. I've seen tumors dissolve overnight if somebody has been in a hot tub for six, seven hours doesn't happen in every case, in most cases, if the tumor's deep. 
If the tumor's on the skin, that's a normal process. So dissolve it with heat, water, heat. Now, if you have um, municipal water, you've got a lot of contamination. And if you're in L.A., proper L.A., not in the valley here, your water's been used three times before it gets there. 196 chemicals. But it's bacteria-free. That's, that's what the government tells you. Oh, it's bacteria-free. It's safe. But you've got all of the industry here in the valley and up in Saugus before it gets to L.A. So you have 196 chemicals in the water if you live in L.A. Here you've got 141 in the valley. So take a look at that. You need to protect yourself. I recommend putting about a raw, a cup of raw milk in the bath with about three tablespoons of raw apple cider vinegar and some sun-dried sea salt. And that will neutralize the poisons so that they don't get into your tissues and cause more problems. Now, when I used to get into the L.A. water without those ingredients in it, I would be shaking like I had five cups of coffee in just minutes. Six minutes, I would be a nervous wreck. So I had to experiment and learn how I could defuse these toxins that were in the water. And just think about it. All the people who use you know, paint thinners and the industry that use all their solvents and muriatic acid, all of that's in the water and not filtered out well. So you have to protect yourself. So you get into, and the, the hot tub is the best, like an Ofuro uh, Japanese hot tub. I think you can get them for like $1,850 now, and they used to be 6000 and then the works, if you get those in parts and have a plumber come in and put it all together, you can have a whole set up for about $2,500. And let me tell you, that's the best money you'll ever spend besides good nutrients. So you dissolve those dead cells. You make sure that your lymphatic system can dissolve dead cells, cells on a daily basis because you lose a tremendous amount of cells every day. And if you don't dissolve them, they will collect. That's why cancer can grow so quickly. And it isn't a growth of the cancer cell because the cancer cell is the, is the remedy. Cancer cell is the cure. Why is that? Because when I fractionated the cancer cell, what I found was it had a fluid in it that would dissolve anywhere from 50 to 200 dead cells that surround it. And like I said, in a tumor, you will only have less than 1% to 2% cancer cells in this whole dead mass. So the cancer cell, when it dies, it sets out all this fluid to dissolve all this dead tissue around there. Your body had better be fat and prepared to deal with that kind of dissolved toxicity because whatever has killed that cell, whatever industrial chemical has killed that cell or compound, whichever it may be, will do more damage. It can dissolve your whole tissue. And it's very easy to take the hot baths and eat properly. Reversing cancer is that easy if you know what you're doing and you understand it. You don't have to have this vitamin supplement and that vitamin supplement. You hear all this stuff, iodine, iron, we're not plants. Plants eat rock. We don't eat rock. We only digest minerals properly and utilize them properly when they are a composite of food, raw food. It's the only way we get complementary. And salt is one of the worst things a cancer patient, anybody can do next to cooking. Why is that? Because sodium is an explosive. It is more volatile than nitroglycerin. If you take pure sodium and put it into one block about the size of a football, it will take out New York City and all of its buildings, just one block that size. My father worked on, he was an inventor, he made his first bearing computer. He worked on jet engines for the military and General Electric and they were given $2 billion to make sodium into a weapon. But it was so volatile that just one and a half degree temperature change would set it off. 
They couldn't control it anywhere like nitroglycerin. And they still don't use nitroglycerin as a weapon because they can't control it. Sodium is worse. So what happens when salt, it has other minerals bound with it, of course, unless it's sodium chloride or sodium iodide, which is manufactured. So that neutralizes it while it's in your mouth, but you can hear it popping, you can hear it cutting into the mucus. Then you gargle with it and it breaks down mucus. It's an explosive. So what happens when it gets into the blood, your body separates the sodium and all of a sudden it starts exploding. Now when a cell eats, it eats 93 to 117 nutrients. That's every nutrient on this planet in a smorgasbord. And a cell opens by ionization and it absorbs that smorgasbord in and eats a balanced diet. When you use salt, even just two little bitty grains at a meal, you will kill two million red blood cells and make every cell in your blood deficient. It will break that molecule, it'll start breaking up those clusters of smorgasbord, and the cell may get anywhere from 23 to 70 nutrients instead of 93 to 117. So your body goes under constant deficiency, undergoes constant deficiency because you use salt. Salt is the big way that the king and queen of England used to subjugate a lot of people for a very, very long time. And, and the king and queen of England, that family owns almost all of the salt manufacturing in the world. And it's not a good thing. Sure, it helps preserve food and it'll help mummify you. Of what? Dead cells. What is cancer? Collection of dead cells. And again, like Samuel Epstein said, Dr. Samuel Epstein, one in every two men gets cancer, one in every three women today. That's a horrible rate. How can that be? Okay, we look back and we see where the start of it began after World War II. Now, what was World War II used? In my, my research, I found that World War II was used to bring in canned and preserved foods, industrially canned. What happened immediately after the canned foods came in after World War II? Tonsillitis and poliomyelitis. Two metal-forming diseases that dissolved the spinal cord and the tonsils. Now, the tonsils protect the brain from any kind of toxin that's in the food that you eat. And it started rotting and deteriorating the tonsils exponentially. They didn't blame it on the canned foods. What they did was started 61, the king and queen of England who ran, who runs 70% of all and owns 70% of all the food manufacturing in the world, started lining the tin cans inside with plastic. That's when plastic came into fold. They didn't tell you, they didn't want to tell you why they were all of a sudden plasticizing the inside because people would have linked a lot of diseases like tonsillitis and polio to that. And then what happened in 1958? The drop in, in cancer, I mean in polio, went down to one per, less than 1%. And that's when the vaccine came out the year after. But they cured polio. Nonsense. No vaccine has ever cured anybody of anything and prevented anybody of anything. When I did research from 93 to 96 at the Sorbonne Institute in France, three months of every year for those three years, a little over three years. I had a translator. I, I can read a lot of French, but I can't do all of that, not in technical form. So I had a translator with me, and not one of the animals, not one animal ever survived Pasteur's vaccines. They all went into anaphylactic shock and died. Now you have to take a look at that. Why did they die? Because when the body has that kind of toxicity in it, it supposes that it's going to die. That's it, it's going to die. So it goes into anaphylactic shock and dies. So what did the pharmaceutical industry, Rockefeller and them decide to do? They started putting formaldehyde in first, and they found that fewer people, the fewer animals went into anaphylactic shock. Then they went into uh, putting uh, mercury and other substances in it, uh, liquid aluminum, mercury, formaldehyde, ether, and detergent were the main ones. No ingredients in a vaccine is safe. 
they are all toxic on their own account. And when you put them into a soup, what do you have? 